to be reading our script before us. Um, and she's doing so from the, the comforts of home oh, okay. uh, on a nice 31 degree night. Amen. Uh, so why don't we all stand if you're able uh, and we're going to read the scripture and, and then I'm, I'm going to ask uh, Brother Justin if you want to lead us in prayer uh, after the scripture has been read. So uh, Sister Brooke, can you, can you lead us in that scripture reading? And, and tell us where it's from, of course. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. I'm reading from the New King James Version. Chapter 26, um, Acts 26 through 24 to 32. Now, as he thus made his defense, Festa said with a loud voice, Paul, you are beside yourself. Much learning is driving you mad. But he said, I'm not mad, most, most noble Festus, but speak the words of truth and reason. For the king before womb, I also speak freely, knows these things. For I am convinced that none of these things escapes from his attention, since this thing was not done in a corner. King Agrippa, do you believe prophets? I know that you do believe. Then Agrippa said to Paul, you almost persuade me to become a Christian. And Paul said, I would to God that not only you, but also all who hear me today might become both also and altogether such as I am, except for these chains. When he had said these things, the king stood up as well as the governor and Bernice and those who sat with them. And when they had gone aside, they talked among themselves saying, this man is doing nothing worthy of chains or death of je death or chains. Then Agrippa said to Festus, this man might have been set free if he had not appealed to Caesar. Amen. Amen. Brother Justin, can you lead us in prayer? Father God, from the future, yeah. uh, tonight, Lord God, thank you for another day, Lord God, for us to get here and fellowship with your word, Father. Forgive us, forgive us of all sins, see not this deed, Lord. And Lord God, allow us to uh, eat your word for us. Partaking of this food, Lord, now uh, partaking of bread of life, Father God. Yes. Lord God, thank you for this fellowship time and allow us to just continue to soak in your word and be here with one hunger and desire for you. Jesus. Yes. Jesus name. Amen. 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 All right. All righty. We got another seat here, and there's a couple up here. If you want to sit in the front row, uh, looks like we got. Was there one right next to you, Brother Justin? Is that right? Right. You right there. Okay, making room here. All right, we're going to get started today. Uh, Dr. Gus Roman is back with us again for this last time on Wednesday night. Well, he, yeah, last night for this month, because he may be back some other time. We never yeah, know. Yeah. 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 Hey, hey. The older one. The older one. I was glad to get him back. And I, I tried to get him to come and preach on Sunday, but he's committed at another Zion. Another Zion. But he's committed there to, to help them out. Uh, so he couldn't be with us on Sunday. But we praise God for his ministry and for the, the time we've had to share in the word. Uh, so, Dr. Roman, why don't you go ahead and um, and lead us in tonight's uh, study? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, first, let me, let me, I'm going to say it again, but I want to, I want to express how, how much I appreciate what's taking place here. And, uh, this great pastor that you have here, his family, um, uh, put a whole lot of love on him. Yeah. The way you're doing, amen. Yeah, so you'll never, 
Think about looking at another girl. <laughs> Amen. It's, it's wonderful to be here with your fellowship, your thoughtfulness, and uh, and that sort of thing. I, I appreciate that. Uh, we ministers, not all of us, we we should spend more time listening to our people. Amen. Uh, they have they have insights. Uh, the Spirit of God works with all of us, and uh, and I know He works with uh, with folks who gather around the table on Wednesday night. Yes, and the way you have with your Bibles, having read stories and that sort of thing. But I appreciate you. Man, yeah, and I got a model here that I'm going to be looking at. So if I'm going to give them, give you credit. Yep, I'm going to say it happened in Zion and Ambler, but mm -hmm. I like the model. Yeah, you know who gave so right. warm? That was is the madam. That's right, that, first, that's lady. Right. first lady, well, well. first lady. That's what you. You better say that. <laughs> Sister, yeah. Sister Frida won't let me get away with stealing somebody <laughs> else's ideas. It, yeah. It's a great idea, I think. Good to see Brother Montag and the ministers here, yes, uh, these thoughtful, committed uh, folks. Armstead, good to have you with a smile. And I know how you can smile like that with all you've been through. That's for certain. And uh, great wife. Great wife Homestead. Amen. And she's a good driver. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, these 30 years or so that uh, uh, that we have in the book of Acts, and you look at the life of Jesus, you know, 33 right. and a half years, uh, in that period of time. And when you look at the book of Acts and look at uh, uh, look at what happened uh, in the beginning with Jesus uh, talking to his disciples, spending 40 days with them, and, uh, and then ascended, mm -hmm. and then uh, uh, commissioning his, his disciples, his apostles, and uh, and giving them that one eight, I, yeah, yeah, that one eight, the one eight, the one eight, and the promise of the Spirit of God. God did not, God did not send them or told them that they have to go into all the world and preach and whatever. He put it this way. When the Spirit of God comes upon you, when the Holy Ghost comes upon you, then you will be my witnesses. Mm -hmm. Yeah, here in Jerusalem and uh, Judea and all over the place. But the Spirit of God and the book of Acts, the book of Acts is a demonstration of how, of how we can, though unlike Jesus, Jesus lived with that kind of commission. Mm -hmm. Behold, I come in the volume of your book to do your will, yeah. oh God. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right? Now, because the Spirit of God is on us, in us, because of him, we can say something similar. Mm. Yes. Because I have an Acts 1 8, because uh, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Yeah. Yes. yeah. Uh, I'm anointed to preach the gospel. You are anointed to yes. preach the gospel. Mm -hmm. and, and that's what Acts is all about. The Episcopalians have something they call the. Uh, uh, Acts 29. Yeah, yeah, Acts 29. And uh, he, he he picked it up right away. He stopped eating. <laughs> <laughs> but tell us what that meant to you. No, no, no. no. 
Acts 29. I'm eating. Yeah. Yeah. Acts continues. There is no 29. We are 29 in the following chapters. But the question is, have you picked up, have we picked up, grasped, internalized the meaning of 1-8? And how serious are we about the spirit of yeah. God, who is the essential part of 1-8? Yeah. The, whole, the whole chapter is about 1-8. And the whole theme of the church's life or to be about one eight. The book of Acts, we are writing, we are writing as a church and in our lives the contents for one eight. That's that's chapter twenty nine and plus. <laughs> we're we're on the other side of twenty eight. And, uh, and and that is that is so precious. So when we look at the book of Acts, we see the implementation of that theme, one eight, and we see how God uses a variety of personalities, types of personalities, mm -hmm. to do what to get that one eight. Across, yeah. unbelievable, unbelievable. It's not just Peter, and it's not just Paul, because there is no Paul without another character by the name of Barnabas, and 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 even beyond Barnabas, there is Ananias. While Paul is blind for three days, and his chap comes in there, and he says. Brother Paul, I was reluctant about coming here to see you, but the Lord told me to come and and uh, and 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 give you what He gave me. Your mission, <laughs> your mission, is to do something with that one of you, and you're going to be before kings and rulers and all of these people and whatever. Yeah. The mix of personalities in making one eight possible is unlimited. Look at the look at the cripple at the gate. A uh, beautiful. What role does he play in implementing one eight? A beggar just healed, and here he is playing. A major significant role in one age. Oh, yeah. 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 The, the one eight, the one eight theme is a theme that that pulls all of us yeah. to it, regardless of your status. Amen. Regardless about how much you know, yeah. there is an agenda for you to implement one eight. There's an agenda. And that agenda is carried out as we are ourselves are open to the Holy Spirit. Because it can't happen without him. And one of the game plans of the devil, and he's been pretty successful in it, effective in it, if you if you will, effective in it, if you will, is to keep us a little confused and reluctant to embrace and to be open and to be cooperative to the Holy Spirit. Amen. What we say, I, I don't. Those people jumping up and hollering and clapping their hands and all of that. Yeah. And I spent all this time in school. Do you think I'm going to be? 
I mean, I mean that, that's that's a that's a demonic that's a demonic suggestion that's a demonic suggestion, and they learn that in uh, they learn that by uh, by uh, by by the devil of course the screw tape, the screw oh, tape. <laughs> yeah CSS. yeah they have a, they, it's a description where demons go to school to learn how to be good demons, and they graduate and whatever. And and those who specialize in what I just described, they have advanced in whatever. Uh, and and a part of that is to make us not conscious about the reality and and the guidance of the Holy Spirit in our lives. The best friend, the best thing that could happen in all of our lives is to be open to the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. and to allow him who indwells us, and that's what the book of Acts is all about, who indwells us yeah. to use the stuff that's inside mm -hmm. of us. Mm -hmm. So he's in your, in your brain, in your mind, he's inside of you, making that mind function more effectively. Yes. And the discipline does not take away in any way the good that's in you, he makes it better. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, but uh, the school uh, screw tape in those letters and whatever, they try to diminish the effectiveness of the Holy Spirit by working on your mind mm. and whatever, that you don't want to be like those folks. Right. Well, you don't have to be like I am and shout and whatever, mm -hmm. but you should have some quickening in your spirit. <laughs> yeah, that's it. I mean, that you you ought to have that. I mean, that's where the spirit works. Yeah. He works on the inside to get something good happening on the outside yeah. through you. Yeah, through you. Through you. <laughs> Through you. Let me try to be a little more specific about the book of Acts and, and don't don't preach. I don't want to be preaching. I just want to emphasize. <laughs> I just want, want, just want to emphasize the importance. All right, for you. Yeah, because, because nothing makes sense without that one aid. Yeah. You're going to be witnesses after that comes upon you. Mm -hmm. And when that anointing comes, it's just not anointing. It is the indwelling yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. who remains in you. As Jesus says, he'll be in you, within you, forever. Yeah. 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 The problem is... You do not, I do not have a continuing consciousness of the Holy Spirit. Screwtape has taught his folks that people cannot enjoy life uh, uh, with the Holy Spirit. And yet one of the fruit of the Holy Spirit is joy. joy. I got to have a bottle of wine <laughs> to have joy. Well. And it works pretty fast. <laughs> you know, it works pretty fast. But the Holy Spirit it gives that joy. That's right. That's right. Yeah, it's a joy that you have to cooperate with him so it can come through you. Yeah, yeah. And the joy that comes through you from the Holy Spirit wow. has a contagious, yes. has a contagious quality yeah. about it. Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, that's the difference. Mm -hmm. That's a big, big difference. Yes, it is. That what the Holy Spirit brings out through you, mm -hmm. the devil tries to match in other ways, but there is no comparison. Yeah. <laughs> there's there's no 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 comparison no comparison and that's the th sort of thing that kept paul going he said paul why are you going doing all of this why are you doing all yes. this well you know what i did before i was doing this I'm the kind of guy that when I give myself to something, I give myself to it. I was fully, fully prepared to accept whatever the dictates of the law. I was in the forefront. Mm -hmm. Ask my teacher, Gamalia, ask them all. That's where I was. And, and when this happened to me, and I was watching the clothes of the people stoning him. Mm. I was there. I saw the blood. Mm. And I was saying, hit him with another one. Yeah. <laughs> and throw it harder. So I was right there, egging him on. Egg, egg, and I meant it. Mm. And, uh, and I was determined to wipe him out to the best of my ability. Mm. Got permission from uh, the priest, from Sanhedrin, the highest uh, to do that. And on my way to Damascus, something happened. Something happened. <laughs> something happened. It's the something that happened that made all the difference in the world. It was not the sun or anything like that. Yeah. But those things that brought about, about a condition in his life and mind that he wanted to serve Jesus. On, Who on. are you? Say, I'm Jesus of Nazareth. I'm the one. I'm the one. You're fighting. When you hurt them, yeah, you hurt me. On, Powerful shawty. And you cannot, you cannot understand New Testament theology. You cannot understand the New Testament, really, Bible. You cannot understand Christology. Mm -hmm. You cannot understand pneumatology. You cannot have understanding of these spiritual things without the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Paul said, that was more than an eye opener. Mm -hmm. More than an eye opener. Now, why am I saying all of this? And I, yeah, I'm saying all of this because if there's anything I want you to get from the book of Acts, is the reality of the spirit. Mm -hmm. How everything that we know about Christ, about God, you got to know that it came out of Acts. Mm -hmm. Not from the University of Athens. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. But from Acts, from people in one accord coming together out of obedience to Jesus, yeah. and something happened. Mm -hmm. And the world has not been the same ever yeah. since. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Yeah. So if we embrace the book of Acts, Embrace it and get in it with our imagination and our hearts and our minds and whatever. <laughs> you don't know what will happen. That's the greatness of this moment here that pastor has brought. This book of Acts. To get in it. To listen to it. And see how God's one eight works its way out from Jerusalem all the way to Rome, all the way to Rome. Who would have ever thought <laughs> that those fishermen and whatever and those folks who got together, who got together, 
that that message they would be taking to Rome. Yeah. Now, how we must suffer? Yeah. One act is <clears throat> one eight is a part of that too. Yeah. And screw tape has a message mm -hmm. to prevent the suffering part of this from happening. He said, why are you going to go through all of that? You don't have to go through all of that mm -hmm. to serve God. You don't have to fast or anything like that. You don't, don't have to do anything like that. Uh, God doesn't need you to do that. Let me tell you what God, have you heard of prosperity? Yes. Prosperity gospel? Yeah. 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 You do good, God will bless you. You have good, God has blessed you. You do good and you're not blessed. I wonder if God's doing anything with you. Mm. So there's a formula. I'm blessed. Look at my shoes. <laughs> I'm blessed. Look at my car. I'm blessed. Look at these things. That's a screw tape message mm. that's trying to distort mm. what God has for us to do and witness to in this world. Um, uh, suffering. How Paul suffered. How Paul suffered. Why are you doing that, man? He said, why aren't you doing it? <laughs> if you realize, as I realize, how much he's gone through for me and how he put up with me in my stupidity, you would be suffering too mm -hmm. for him. And so Paul said, I wave the flag. I suffer for him. Mm -hmm. Suffer for him. And you cannot read the book of Acts without seeing the pain and the suffering in the book of Acts. Mm -hmm. you, can't see, you can't see without the persecution. Right? right. right. Can't see. It is inevitable. The cross is inevitable. When you let your light shine, somebody, something is going to be trying to put it out. That's what devils do. Yeah. yeah. Amen. And that's what devils do. That's and that's what the book of Acts is about to whenever God got somebody. He's working through, working with. Mm -hmm. The devil said, y'all better get over there. Get over there. Stop him. Slow him down. Make him sick. Do something. Make him stumble or whatever, whatever. So whenever there is a positive move in the spirit that you make, like what you're making here, the devil said, you better get there right away. Get that preacher. I don't want him to be pushing stuff like this. Don't let these people be excited, excited about what they're doing. About one eight. Uh, no, 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 don't do that. So screw tape in his lessons will do everything he can to prevent him and you and you there. For promoting this message. Mm -hmm. And the spirit of God who is within you. He's doing everything he can to get our attention. Mm -hmm. he, wants to, he wants to talk to you. Want you to learn how to listen to him. And all of that. Ain't no better conversation. Than when you listen. Mm -hmm. To the spirit. Come on, man. Be quiet. Be quiet. Be quiet. <laughs> be quiet. Speak, Lord. Ooh. Be quiet. Be quiet. Be quiet. We have to learn how to be quiet. Get in a state of mind and of spirit 
so we can hear the Spirit. Yeah. Learn how to be still and be quiet. Mm -hmm. He's laughing. You see these kids, some of them, they got all drugged up and messed up and whatever. They're like, they start giggling and laughing at something yeah. or whatever. I do some of that, but I'm not giggling, laughing. Mm. I'm listening to the Lord. Mm. And like Charles Mason, Charles Mason used to say, yes, Lord. Mm. <laughs> yes, Lord. <laughs> Who's he talking to? <laughs> <laughs> yes, Lord. The discipline of Paul must have learned that in, in Arabia. Mm. To come out, to come out and present a fresh gospel, like he did when he was so dedicated yeah. to that Judaistic and legalistic stuff, right. huh? Yeah. So Monty, yeah. Just think what what happened to him in Arabia. Yeah, he spent that time. Yeah, in Jesus. The Holy Spirit teacher said, "No, Paul. No, Paul. Let's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. Sure. Just, 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 just. Right, right there, Paul. This is it. Here, go, go, go back. Go back. Go back to Joel. Go back yeah. to Joel. This is it. This is it, Paul. Yeah. Go, go back. Go back. The discipline that he had to go through, the education, the quiet time. Can I sneak on you? I want to get in your soup oil." Mm. In your punch or something. <laughs> when was the last time you had an Arabia moment? Wow. Yeah. Yeah. A quiet time. A quiet time. Somebody knocking at my door. Mm -hmm. I didn't hear it before, <laughs> but now that I am quiet and I, I'm looking for my Arabia movement, my Arabian movement, the spirit is there. Can you imagine the spirit being in you and you don't realize it? <laughs> it happens all the time mm -hmm. because we're so caught up screw tape got us booging my <laughs> you got us doing our thing whatever whatever the thing is you know and the purpose of the thing yeah. is that is to draw you away from him yes, sir. that's the game that's the bottom line the bottom line if you have an entertainment that will mm. lift your spirit to him. Yeah. When I get to heaven, one of the things I want to know, Lord, where are they dancing? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Everywhere. Everywhere. That's not original by me. By yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's good. It's good. Dance unto the Lord. Yeah. You can do it now. Yes, yes, yes. yeah. Mm. Yeah, got the blues, baby. Yeah. <laughs> I can't handle this thing inside of me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Did you? Perhaps everybody doesn't know who screw tape is. <laughs> Yeah, tell him. Screw tape is a is an experienced demon, a devil, mm -hmm. and he has a, a someone that he's uh, someone he's trying to teach. Yeah, named that's Ron right. Wormwood. Yeah, that's right. That's he's right. Teaching how to be a devil. Yeah, uh, and all of it was written by C.S. Yeah. Lewis. That's right. And um, it's called the Screw Tape Letter. Screw Tape Letter. Letter. Yeah. Screw tape. That's why you keep saying it's a devil. That's teaching other devil how to be a devil. That's it. Monte, you remember here? I am. Good. 
Right. He don't know how to spot him. <laughs> Spiritual discernment. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's very good. Very good. Very good. Very good. But I think uh, uh, this this consciousness of the spirit within us, we have to we have to get used to that. Now, the screw tape has a message for that too. You got to watch it. And that's that transcendental meditation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I saw you forming, you know. Yeah. Transcend transcendental meditation can be tricky. Uh, it can be tricky because your spirit can, you can be so disciplined in, in communing with your spirit and releasing your spirit and releasing your spirit that your spirit is open to other spirits. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh! <laughs> so, um, you know, this actually, this thought came to me as I was reading in chapter 22 and verse 17. It says that when um, the doctor I went, uh, returned to Jerusalem while I was praying in the temple, I mm -hmm. fell into a train. Mm -hmm. Being with the spirit in a trance in that sort of way can be amazing. But it does open us up. So yeah. I was mm -hmm. reading this, but also thinking recently about the passing of Carlton Pearson. Mm -hmm. Removed, experienced personal crisis, removed himself, mm -hmm. and then came to a new theology mm -hmm. in his quiet moment. Mm -hmm. And so I, my question to you is, can you yeah. speak to us about the dangers that might be inherent in opening ourselves up? Yeah. That's yeah. exactly what was on my yeah. mind. Yeah, because I, I was leading to that and you picked it up right away. Yeah. You've got a great lady. I know, I know. <laughs> They've been trying to tell them. They don't listen. <laughs> well, you have, uh, you have in scripture uh, the witch of Endor. You remember that? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, the witch of Endor. Saul went to the witch yes. of Endor for, for counsel, yeah. right? Yeah. You remember that? Yeah. Uh, to get counsel from uh, from a deceased Samuel. You remember that? You remember that? Contact was made with a spirit reality. A spirit reality that provided counsel and direction to Saul and got him all messed up. Yeah. So when you open, and this is in a quaint caravan, there's a lady they call the gypsy. She can look in your hand, tell at a glance. It's real. Psychic phenomena, psychic phenomena, spirits. There was a guy by the name of Dr. Rhymes at Duke University, he used to do research in this area. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, he used to do research in paranormal, mm -hmm. paranormal <laughs> psychology. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, about people who, who have these relationships with spirits and whatever, whatever. Mm -hmm. Whatever. The spirit world is real. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Sir. Yeah, it's real. Mm -hmm. And they have influence. And the greater the cooperation is on my part with their agenda gives them power and more space in me. In me, that's a part of the anatomy of it. And what we have to do, that precious Holy Spirit who is in us, you know, allow him to prepare our spirits because you have a spirit. That spirit that you have has such energy and power and grasp and reach and can get out there and contact, be in contact with a lot of realities, a lot of realities. Uh, uh, spiritualists, spiritism. 
I'm from Louisiana. The hoodoo world. Yeah. They put little portions together, put on you, whatever, and get your head all mixed up. And then some of them give themselves to spirits yeah. and whatever. Yeah. And get themselves all messed up. Who do whatever, whatever. The spirit of God wants to work with our spirits, our minds, work with us. So we will not give in to that. Sometimes we do it consciously. I want that power. Like, uh, what is it? Uh, what is it? What is it? What is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah that's in uh, Samaria. Yeah, 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 Simon. Yeah, Simon. Yeah, the sorcerer. He saw, he saw them with that power. Said, how much can I, how much I can buy it for? Yeah, 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 yeah. And that's that, that is. Is it Dr. Faustus? Uh, Dr. Faustus, this is a classic uh, piece of literature. Uh, he's an old man. He's given himself to study and all that kind of stuff. And then he, one day he looks out his window and he says, oh, look at those pretty young ladies and all of that sort of thing. Look how much I missed and whatever and whatever. So I'm a bright young man, got a little money, got a man, not, not, not young, got money in the bank and all that rich. Dr. Faustus, mm. smart, brilliant, everybody looking at me for culture. But I can't dance with that girl. She doesn't want me. She will not give me a second look, whatever. How can I become young? Mm. How can I be young, become young and get her favor? Mm -hmm. So the story is he, he sells himself mm -hmm. to the devil. Mm. For youth. Mm. For youth. Mm. And the devil says, okay, uh, I'm going to make you young, give you a good taste, energize your whole body and all that kind of stuff. No more arthritis. That's out. You ain't got to worry about that anymore. <laughs> take, away, take away that gray hair you got, making you look old. No more wrinkles in your face. You got it, boy. <laughs> Uh, but you know you got so many years, and after that, I'm coming to collect. Okay. <laughs> and uh, sign here. Wow. Yeah. And uh, and that's the way. That's the way it is. Yeah. So you sign here. Symbolically, you sign. You sign. You sign. You sign. You sign. The Holy Spirit says, what is it you want, son? I really want, want to be happy. Really. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about happiness, what it is. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so the Holy Spirit reasons with you, shows you what happiness is. He says, I can give you that. Mm -hmm. And I want to give you that. You want some joy? I can give you that too. Mm -hmm. You want wisdom? Give you that too. What you want out there that uh, that school, that demon school is providing, I can give it to you. And I want to give it to you. And that's what we mean by the fruit of the spirit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the fruit of the spirit. How the Holy Spirit inside of us can bring about these beautiful virtues. Mm -hmm. How can you smile and you're about to die? How can you do that? You're losing your loved one. How can you act like that? Because the Holy Spirit is working inside of you. How can I put up with this mess that I'm putting up with? It's not me. It's the Holy Spirit taking the stuff inside of me mm -hmm. and giving me putting up with that power. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and he and he and he gives that it makes that's an offer that we all have across the board. Mm -hmm. And that's one eight. 
One aid is not simply saying who Jesus is. It is showing what Jesus has done. Mm -hmm. And people ask you, where'd you get that from, lady? Mm -hmm. I'm glad you recognize. Yeah. I'm glad you asked. I got that from Jesus. Mm -hmm. So the doing of Jesus, the, the, the Jesus living, even if you don't say a word, it becomes a part of the witness. Because really, it's not how good you are, but it, that makes it. <clears throat> it's your cooperation with him yeah. around the Jesus-centered piece that makes stuff happen. When the Spirit of God comes, He will, He will, yeah. He will reprove the. Is that right? Yeah. He will, He will. The Spirit of God, He will reprove the world of what sin. Yeah. Don't you dare think you did it. Yeah. He did it through you. Yeah. The book of Acts, don't you dare say, Peter, you did it. Yeah. Don't you dare say, Paul, you did it. The Spirit of God did it in you. Yeah. It's one eight. When the Holy Ghost has come upon you, dead. Yeah. Are you the one who said right. the book should be more appropriately titled The, the Acts, Acts of the Holy Lord. Spirit yeah. through the Apostles? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Look. You made me talk too much. <laughs> I like to add, I like some questions. Yeah, let's do First that. lady, yeah. Yeah, some questions. Yeah. That, yeah. The rest of you, please, please. Well, we just know that when we got you know, open time for questions, that there's always gonna be a good one coming out of the first lady's queen. I think I already you had one good one already. That's true. <laughs> you know, I got a comment though. I, I was I was listening to young Brooke read that passage. Mm -hmm. And because you saw, I think if you listen to Dr. Roman tonight you, and you read through these these sections of Paul in prison here, in prison there, taken here, taken there, you can see everything that he's saying come to life. Mm -hmm. that, how we do. And it's all about this one eight, this Holy Spirit <clears throat> making you a witness wherever he is, right? Mm -hmm. Wow. So at, at the end of 26, chapter 26, he he has really convinced them that he didn't do anything to break the law. doesn't deserve to be in prison. So they should let him go. But earlier, Paul's already said, I'm a Roman citizen. I, de I demand to go see the emperor. Yeah, that's right. So Agrippa finishes of the 26th chapter. This man could have been set free if he had not appealed to the emperor. They didn't know 1-8. Paul wanted more opportunities, or the Holy Spirit wanted to give him more opportunities to preach the gospel. And everywhere he went, uh, sometimes, you know, it's, it's a, a case against Paul for something, and Paul winds up saying stuff like, yeah, yeah, but let me tell you about my conversion story. <laughs> and he keeps coming back to what he's witnessed. Yeah. Even, even um, when, he, when he talks about um, their idol that is walking through the town, and he comes across the unknowns. Yeah. Oh, let me, tell, let me tell you about him. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Yeah, yep. I love it. You gotta talk about Jesus. Yeah. You know, that's an interesting thing. Uh, 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 there is a prophet he comes across in his travel, uh, Agatha, something like that. Agabus. Agabus. And he says, he takes the garments from Paul. You, you know the story. And he says, the man who wears his garment, uh, there's something awful is going to happen to him, yeah. prison and whatever. And when a prophet says that to you, that you're going to Jerusalem and this is not a good place for you to go, you will have harm and injury. A prophet said that to you. Your conclusion is, I better stay away from Jerusalem. Yeah. That's not what he said. That's, what, that's I not what he said. I got to go. I got to go. Right. Though the spirit of God spoke through a legitimate prophet. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing wrong with that prophet. He was of God. Yes, he was. And he told Paul and the rest of them, this man is going to have some hard time yeah, going to Jerusalem. And Paul said, 
Don't grieve my heart. Yeah, that's what he said. That's what he said. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Ain't that something? Yeah. I mean, it's like God saying, I want you to go there. They're going to beat you up, kill you, Jesus. Yeah. Don't go to Jerusalem. You're going to be crucified there. Gotta go. I gotta go. Right, right. Because in disobeying, God, what is it, my dear? In disobeying God, there is more suffering than following. Yes, yes. Towards suffering because we're suffering for Him. Yes, yes. It becomes a sacrament to use Catholic terminology. Yeah, all right. As Paul said, these scars on me. Well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> They speak about my dedication yeah. and commitment to Christ. Yeah. So the suffering becomes, and Paul, I mean, I mean, this guy, oh my God, my God, he was just tremendous. Yes, he was. Yeah. Well, but then Sister uh, Minister Trace, uh, excuse me, MIT Tracy. <laughs> yes. Many in the past have I was thinking about Paul's ability to endure, and I was wondering, like, it seems like the Holy Spirit gave him power to endure that suffering. Mm -hmm. And I think about, you know, the things that we go through, you know, we might have, you know, say on your worst day, you might have a, something going on in church, something in the family, something mm -hmm. at the job. But here Paul had, it's like the Holy Spirit gave him the strength to, to Cling to Jesus, even though he was suffering. So he got mobbed, death threat, pain, shipwreck, all this. Because I, I was like, oh my gosh, this is painful. <laughs> <laughs> I found all of this stuff. It just seemed like there was no point of rest for him, but he just kept pressing yeah. and just saying, but That's Jesus, but my conversion. And I was thinking, you know, it's, it's part of that power, the, the ability mm -hmm. to endure. Would you stand, please? <laughs> please stand. I want us to give you a hand. <laughs> it's young yeah, like that. <laughs> that is tremendous. That that is that is a tremendous statement. Oh my God, that is so 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 wonderful. Right. How can Stephen, like Paul, go through all of this stones? Here comes another man. And he says, what to them? Yeah. What is it? Yeah. What is it? And remember when they put him on the deacon board? Yep, yeah, that's right. <laughs> made him a deacon. Uh, made him a deacon. One of the things they said about a deacon, why we put him on the deacon board, that he was what there? I said, <laughs> that's it, yeah. that's it. There's no way in the world he could have gone through that. Yeah. 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 So the selection, <laughs> all right, Paul. The selection of our leaders, we have to be serious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No about their attitude no yeah. towards the Holy Ghost. Yeah. 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 How receptive they are. Yeah. People cuss you out. I don't like to be cussed out, but, <laughs> but I love you. And maybe if I can show Christ, you might stop cussing me out. Yeah. 
and even stop cussing the other folks out too. Because if you cuss me out, chances are you're cussing some other folks out. And if you're a member of this church, that's not good for this church. Because <laughs> we're more than that. <laughs> yeah, we're more than that. But I, oh, I appreciate you so much. I love that. I love that. I love that. I love that. Yes, dear. <laughs> I want to ask you to stand again. <laughs> <laughs> that is exactly from from the from the initial sermon to one nation. <laughs> I, I I think it's great. I, I think it's great. I think it's great. I think it's great. And in a workplace, you know, how do we live out acts in yeah. in the workplace? Yeah. You know, how do how do we live that out? You know, the kind of world that we live in. You know? What's the meaning of letting your light shine? How do you let your light shine? Yeah. You know, what is the meaning of the wisdom of the spirit? Allowing the spirit to speak yeah. through you. How do you look at people who obviously don't care about you? Yeah. How do you look at them? What kind of prayers do you offer for them? Mm -hmm. She can't stand me. I can tell that lady can't stand me. I don't care what I wear. She still can't stand me. <laughs> I thought it was my perfume, but she just can't. She just mean. It just mean. <laughs> what am I going to do about that? Whenever I see her, I surround you with the love of God. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. I keep surrounding you with the love of God. Here she come again, Lord. I surround her, Lord, with your love in the name of Jesus. And watch the church. Yeah. If the Lord say vengeance belongs to me, that's I right, know that's right. I know what you're gonna do. You want to bring your knife, say that I see you again, I'm gonna cut her. I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna put my put my initial on that I'm gonna cut her, I'm gonna cut her. You better not come now. So I got to <laughs> I gotta pray not only for her, but <laughs> and of course, you know, you and you don't, and why don't why don't you? Right? I mean, I've had them tell me. They told me in some other kind of terms too, I won't say. Yeah. But they say, you know, why didn't you retaliate? Why didn't you hit back? Why didn't you and the thinking is how will that help spread the gospel? Yeah. And have you seen these lousy videos of Preacher and church member fist fighting on the on the sidewalks and stuff. Uh, woman and man sometimes, you know, going at it. Uh, and, and how is and other things that are probably even worse than that. How does that spread the gospel? What does that do? What and what does that do for our witness? My mother-in-law talks about it every day at, when she was at work back in the day because she don't work now. Um, I should have said it that way. <laughs> you still work, right? She's working on that board. <laughs> right. but, but everything she does is about the witness. You know, she would talk about that. And when somebody destroys that, that Christian witness of theirs, I'm trying to witness, and now you've, you've hindered that witness by that. So the Holy Spirit will come upon us so that we will be witnesses. And it's all these different places. So wherever your place is, that's where we're supposed to be the witness. Right. I love it. I love it. You know, it's interesting. I, I'm working with a project now that that's international and we for prayer to get prayer in the home of everybody in the world. Mm -hmm. That's impartial. Impartial. <laughs> but we just got some good news that we reached uh, a million people. Wow. Yeah. Through this effort of prayer. prayer. It's a long way to go. When you get in every every country and get a committee promoting prayer, and, uh, 
what I call push prayer. Mm. Mm. Prayer. Yeah. Mm. Prayer. Yeah. Satan, we're gonna knock your wood, knock your kingdom down. Yeah. Bang! Prayer, prayer, prayer. Just bullish, but prayer. Go knock it out. And uh, and it's amazing how this thing is beginning to multiply. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And people, and people coming from other countries, pastors and whatever, signing in and whatever. And it's just amazing. And I would just wonder, say, what would happen to, to the church in, churches in, in uh, Philadelphia, in, in our country, when we would take prayer seriously mm -hmm. and take the Holy Spirit seriously mm -hmm. and the gospel seriously, and just worry, my daughter's not saved. Yeah. Lord, save my daughter. Yeah. Save my child. Yeah. But, you know, mother's crying and father's crying for their children to be saved. Come on. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. No, I mean, that's, that's something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, all of these conveniences. You think that we're doing so well that that screw tapers you know, giving a certificate to some of us. Yeah. You know, because, you know, put a whole lot of food before us and prosperity and whatever, uh, then you're going to have a prosperity gospel. And, mm -hmm. and folks ain't going to be talking about the blood of Jesus and the yeah. suffering and the bleeding cross or anything yeah. like that. You know, and uh, uh, so we're pushing. We're pushing. And who's saving us? Who is setting the best example of the risen Christ, of the Jesus who lived? Who's setting the best example of that? Mm. Unfortunately, not America. Mm. Southern Hemisphere. Mm. Yeah. Is it in the Southern Hemisphere? Mm. Africa. Well, anything Southern. Southern. Yeah. South America. South America. That's, that's where it is. And uh, I'm on... on praying for them, I said, they really should be praying for me. I need their prayers for me. Wow. You know, and we are conditioning them to be satisfied, to be successful with a loaf of bread that we give them or leftovers that we give them. But they are so filled with the spirit mm -hmm. and got so much to offer us. So I told the guys, I said, your technology must not only take us to them, yeah. but your technology got to take, bring them to us. We got to feel the children and feel those families and love them and let that technology serve us that way mm -hmm. you see and then use some imagination AI, artificial intelligence whatever y'all call these things mm -hmm. just be imaginative let's form co-ops and all of that kind of stuff incubators and all of that kind of stuff, macro businesses and all that sort of stuff coming out of a relationship with people who are hurting. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Not out of somebody trying to raise some money to help the poor. That's right. And they show you a, a kid hungry, protruded belly from <laughs> Ethiopia and whatever. He took me there to Ethiopia. This man here. I went to Ethiopia with him. We see all of that suffering there, all that suffering there, all that yeah. suffering. How can I get that suffering here with us so we can see mm -hmm. that God has blessed us with so much and they have so little. And they have so much yes. that we have so little. How can we work together? How can we fellowship together? How can we worship together? How can we sing together? I need their singing and their praying. Just like I have been programmed to think that they need my prayer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. 
Yeah, we're, uh, we're going. We went past the time. I'm going. I was the past. I'm out of here. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay. I'm out of here. Uh, Dr. Roman, yeah. we want to want to bless you tonight. Uh, Thank you. Uh, a couple of things we want to bless you. Uh, this is for for Sister Roman for Sister Roman. loaning you to us throughout the month of November. <laughs> and, for, and we Thank almost you. lost you on the first night. But... Oh, I... and, Thank you. And then from our church, a, a token of our love, a Thank monetary you. token. Let me say a final thing. Sure. About this, dear man. <laughs> Brother Florian. I hope he I hope he never leaves. He can't. I know. I really never, church, yeah. never, never think about it. Once he's, 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 he's on, he can't leave. That's yeah, it. he's got a sign that told me there's an offer I can't refuse. So. <laughs> Everything a pastor and family need is right here. Amen. Amen. I see it in your eyes, and and I, as you talk, I see it, Amen. and I see where he sits. Yeah. This is such a natural, it's such a natural. And this whole community, you can't see it now, will feel the impact, mm -hmm. the impact of your ministry here. Mm -hmm. I mean, people will come from everywhere to find out what's so unique and special about Zion Church. Mm -hmm. I love it. I love it. I love it. And I wish, I, well, I had some great churches, but I I never had a church like this. No, this is the best thing in the world. <laughs> it really is. Yeah, I love it. So thank you so much for the food. Every yeah. time I come here, my wife asks me, say, what did you, what you have? have? <laughs> and I, I show her, I give her a little bag. I say, yeah, some of it is for you. <laughs> got some Thank tips. you so much. You got Thank you. Will we get some tips for him too? Oh, yeah, yeah, she does. Okay, we got to have that ready for him. <laughs> Amen. Uh, okay, uh, we're uh, next week we're going into Advent. And, oh, sorry. Uh, next week we're going into Advent. The scriptures that we're going into are in Isaiah, right? Did you have that? Yep. Isaiah 1 through 12 is what we're reading. Uh, and you get the Emmanuel prophecy in there, uh, in that kind of thing. So uh, read with some anticipation, uh, just as a little bit of a preview. Isaiah is, of course, written so many hundreds of years before the time of Christ. So there's a whole other historical setting to look at. I'll address a lot of that next week when we come back. Uh, but, but come prepared to uh, share thoughts, impact of the scripture on you. Uh, and uh, it, we, we, we won't have Dr. Roman uh, so you all got to jump in and be a lot more participatory next next time out, okay? Uh, but I think that's it for, for that, right? Is everything? Yeah. We're good? Yeah. Reader for next week. Um, who, who wants to read the scripture for? Or do, or do we find a permanent one uh, with little Brooke? You know? <laughs> uh, Reverend Moore. Reverend Moore is going to read. Uh, Frida told you not to make eye contact. <laughs> <laughs> I saw I go right here. Don't look at him. Don't look at him. <laughs> look at him. What's he doing? <laughs> Boom, there it is. Yeah. That's all right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And we'll just we'll start with Isaiah one and 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 just go to oh let's just go to one through nine. Uh, verses one through nine. Okay, uh, Reverend Isaiah one, one through. Frida, leave her alone. Frida's preacher's kid, and I, I, so I, I kind of like preacher's kids. So, <laughs> Amen. Uh, Isaiah one, one through nine. All right, and uh, all right. All right. Okay. Shall we stand then? I think we're ready to go. Uh, tomorrow night we're up. We're back on the prayer line. Every night, uh, midweek on the weeknight, we're uh, seven o'clock on the prayer line. Uh, it's associate ministers' night tomorrow night. 
Uh, I just saw who was supposed to speak tomorrow night. Who's who's the associate minister tomorrow night? Anybody know? Yeah, it's on the bulletin, and I saw it this morning. I didn't do it. Uh, all right. We'll praise the Lord for everything God is doing. Amen. Shall we pray together? Lord, we want to thank you for sending us this servant, this this Gamaliel here, Lord, this, this prophet, this wisdom uh, holder, Lord. Uh, thank you for his eloquence and for his love of the scriptures, for his love for the church, for his knowledge and understanding and relationship with the Holy Spirit, for his prayer life, and all that came out, Lord, and, and was imparted to us over these weeks. Thank you, Lord, uh, for showing us the message in the, in the book of Acts uh, in a new way that we had not contemplated it before. Uh, bless him, Lord. Uh, restore and renew him. Uh, give him strength for the journey, Lord, as he takes on new tasks, Lord, as he yes. ministers to another congregation, Lord, in their time of need. Uh, I pray your Holy Spirit will indeed inspire him, yes. empower him, yes. come upon him, that he might be a witness to them, Lord, and show forth what Jesus Christ is all about. Uh, bless his ministry, bless his wife and his family. Uh, thank you for all that they have gone through during this month with us. Uh, and I pray your blessings be upon them too. Lord, as we go to our places, uh, may 1-8 stay with us, resonate with us. May we think about it as we're falling asleep tonight. May we wake up in the morning and think about 1-8 and how you're going to help us to be a witness today. Uh, bless us, Lord, that the, the theme of Zion in the coming year will be 1-8 that we will be witnesses because the Holy Spirit has overcome mm. us mm. and been empowering us. Blessed then, Lord, Zion Church, as we mm. continue to go forth. In Jesus' name, amen. Yeah. Amen. You know, Hallelujah. Robin, Robin, Robin. <laughs> Bye-bye, y'all. Oh, who's cooking last next week? Oh. Everybody have a blessed night. <laughs> have a blessed one. You too, everyone. Have a blessed night. Bye bye. Bye bye, sweetie. Have a blessed night, everyone. Good night. Good night. Everybody have a blessed night on purpose. No, no, no. Yeah. Have a good night.